Uh, yep, uh, good morning, it's Uncle Lou here, yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live on YouTube for you. Thanks for watching. Playoff scenarios! God, people love talking about playoff scenarios. I hate it. I mainly hate it because people start calling into the call-in shows, like, literally in week two of the football season, wanting to run down, like, every possible playoff scenario for some team that's already started 0-2, and I just think it's a giant waste of time. But we're down to the last two weeks of the regular season now, and uh, there are few enough, I think, playoff scenarios to make it worthwhile to talk about, especially for two particular teams that are getting talked about um, a lot uh, in terms of possible playoff scenarios, Tennessee and Clemson. Now, I've been sitting uh, here in the office all morning long doing a highly advanced Cambodian arithmetic figuring out these playoff scenarios for you so that you don't have to make yourself dizzy uh, doing it yourself. We're going to start with Tennessee. Now, let me get make a, a point out of the way here real quick, too. This is more of an opinion, really. Um, the playoff is not really the four best teams. I think we all know that. It's a combination of like who the playoff committee thinks the four best teams are combined with who they think the four most deserving teams are. It's never really the four best teams. Uh, so when you start to talk about Tennessee, it's pretty clear to me, as bad as Tennessee is defensively and as gimmicky as their offense is, that this year they're one of the four best teams, I think, in college football. That, however, does not make it a guarantee that they're going to get into, uh, into the playoffs. There's been a couple of years, two in particular, where Georgia was clearly one of the best four teams and didn't make it in. Um, for a similar reason that Tennessee kind of finds itself on the outside looking in. Now, in those two years, Georgia made the SEC title game and lost, which is what kept them out, whereas Tennessee couldn't even manage to win their division, uh, never mind uh, get the opportunity uh, to lose in the SEC title game. But it's not a guarantee that Tennessee is going to get into the playoffs just because I think, or anyone else thinks, that they're one of the four best teams, right? We got to run through some possible scenarios here. And when it comes to Tennessee... To me, anyway, it's really not all that complicated, I don't think. Tennessee was fifth in the playoff rankings last week. The updated playoff rankings come out today at 9 o'clock. I got a call-in show I do every Tuesday night. I'm going to start the call-in show around probably 8 o'clock today. Uh, we'll take some calls for about an hour. Then we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cut the phones off for a second. I'll keep live streaming while they announce the uh, updated playoff rankings, and then we'll go back to the phones. So live around 8 o'clock tonight right here on this channel. But Tennessee was fifth last week. All four teams ahead of them won, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and uh, TCU. So I don't expect the top five to change. I think Tennessee will still be fifth. So what needs to happen over the next two weeks of the regular season and – Conference championship weekend, which is three weeks away now, for Tennessee to get into uh, into the playoffs. you got to remember, Tennessee is going to be sitting home on conference Saturday. So, no opportunity for a big win at the end to bolster their resume. Also, no opportunity to lose. So, some good and some bad with that. Tennessee is going to be 11-1. and one. Um Eleven and one when the playoff committee sits down the Sunday after conference championship weekend to make their final determinations. So I've got it narrowed down here to what I think is pretty simple for what Tennessee needs to do. Number one, and this is obvious, Tennessee's got to win out. If that doesn't happen, nothing else matters. Tennessee's not getting in at ten and two with no division title and no conference title. So that's number one, and that's the obvious one. Tennessee's got to win out. I also think uh, uh, number two. And I don't think uh, I don't think there's any way around it. Georgia's got to beat LSU because Georgia's getting in regardless. So if Georgia loses to LSU, LSU is going to get in. LSU is probably only going to be one spot behind Tennessee today when the rankings come out. So if on conference championship Saturday LSU were to beat Georgia, clearly that would vault LSU ahead of Tennessee into the top four. And it would not knock Georgia out of the top four. So you would have two SEC teams in, LSU and Georgia. They're not putting three in. It's not happening. That would bump Tennessee out. So these two things, I think, absolutely 100% have to happen for Tennessee to get in. Tennessee's got to win out and go 12-0. Georgia's got to beat LSU in the SEC title game. 
or LSU's got to lose to Texas A&M in their last regular season game. But uh, that's Texas A&M, so probably not going to happen. Tennessee's got to win out. Georgia got to beat LSU. Number three, I think Ohio State's got to beat Michigan. Um, if Ohio State beats Michigan, Michigan's out. Their non-conference schedule is garbage. They didn't play a single Power 5 team in the uh, in the non-con. Their best win right now is against Penn State, and that is a good win. But if they lose to Ohio State, then Penn State becomes really their only quality win. They'd be 11-1 with no division title and no conference title. And a team like Tennessee, who would be in a similar boat, 11-1, no division, no conference, is going to have more quality wins than Michigan. So if Michigan loses to Ohio State, they're out. I think that's what needs to happen for Tennessee. On the other hand, if Ohio State were to lose to Michigan close, let's say Ohio State loses to Michigan by three, well, Ohio State's going to have that win over Penn State, just like Michigan does. Ohio State's also going to have a win over Notre Dame, who is looking better every single week as long as they continue to win. Notre Dame's a key factor in these rankings as we move on to the next one. It's not a guarantee that Ohio State would still get in the playoffs ahead of Tennessee if they lost to Michigan, but it's a definite possibility. Um, if the committee had to decide between an 11-1 Ohio State and an 11-1 Tennessee, I think they would have a hard time doing that. There are reasons you could argue on either side, and one of those teams would be left crying Sunday afternoon. So I think it's in Tennessee's best interest if Ohio State beats Michigan because that's definitely knocking Michigan, uh, knocking Michigan out. Now we have some uh, if this then that scenarios. The TCU and Southern Cal conundrum. If you're Tennessee, um, the reality is if TCU wins out, they're getting in. It doesn't matter what me or you or anybody else thinks about TCU. A 13 and 0 conference champion, Power Five conference champion this year is getting in. Period. So if TCU runs the table, they're in. I also think Southern Cal gets in if they run the table. They have one loss on the road to a top 15, possibly a top 10 Utah. This They could be a top 10 team. We'll see when the rankings come out. But that's Southern Cal's only loss on the road, on a two-point conversion. Just a crazy ending. If Southern Cal runs the table and wins the Big 12, they're getting in. Their last three games would be wins over ranked teams. They play UCLA this week. They play Notre Dame next week. And then they play the Pac-12 title game against probably Oregon or Utah, whoever wins between Oregon and Utah this week. In any case, if Utah or if Southern Cal manages to navigate that schedule without a loss and finish 12-1 and one with a Pac-12 title, and their last three games are wins against UCLA, Notre Dame, and either Oregon or Utah, they're getting in. So how does this matter for Tennessee? Well, if, T if either TCU or Southern Cal lose, if one of them lose, right, and... Uh, and uh, Ohio State beats Michigan, Tennessee's in. They would only need one of those teams to lose. Tennessee, If Tennessee wins out, Georgia beats LSU, Ohio State beats Michigan, and either TCU or LSU lose, Tennessee's in. I think it's, uh, I think it's that simple. Now, if, uh, if Michigan beats Ohio State, then I think you then need TCU and Southern Cal to lose. It might sound complicated when I sit here and, 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 ex, and, and try to explain it, but it's really not. Basically, Tennessee needs to win out. Georgia needs to beat LSU. Either TCU or Southern Cal needs to lose, or they both need to lose if Michigan beats Ohio State. That's basically it. Those things happen. Tennessee's getting in, probably at the four spot. But what about Clemson? Clemson's like the forgotten team, right? Clemson could get in. Clemson could still get in. It is not beyond the realm of possibility. If you look at the playoff rankings that are going to come out tonight, Clemson is going to be ninth, probably. Probably ninth. Um, it's probably going to be Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU. That's your top four. Tennessee at five. LSU at six. Southern Cal at seven. Bama at 8, and then Clemson at 9. Clemson's going to be sitting there at 9. They currently have the one loss. They play uh, Miami this weekend and South Carolina next weekend. They should be able to win those two games. Then they're going to play North Carolina in the ACC title game. Clemson desperately needs North Carolina to win out. Right now, North Carolina's also got one loss. If North Carolina wins their next two games, they're probably going to be in the top 10 by the time 
the ACC title game is played. So if Clemson beats North Carolina in an ACC title game, that will be a top 10 win in the committee's eyes the day before the final rankings get put out. But what about all the teams ranked ahead of Clemson? Well, a lot of them are going to have to lose, right? Yeah. Here's what has to happen for Clemson to make the playoffs. Obviously, they've got to win out. So does North Carolina. North Carolina's got to be 11-1 going into the ACC title game. Number three, Ohio State needs to beat Michigan. That would eliminate Michigan. If Clemson finishes 12-1 with an ACC title, they will be ranked higher than Michigan at 11-1 when that final ranking comes out. I don't think anybody disputes that. Um, Clemson's got a lot of clout built up over the last few years. They're a big-name program. The committee has shown in the past that they fairly or unfairly will give deference to teams that have sort of proven they deserve to be there type of deal. Uh, so if Ohio State beats Michigan, Clemson will be higher than Michigan in that final ranking. Obviously, Georgia's got to beat LSU. Georgia beating LSU knocks LSU out. LSU beating Georgia takes up two playoff spots if that happens. So, again, going back to Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee or Clemson, either one is not getting in if LSU beats Georgia. Um, number five, again with TCU and Southern Cal. TCU needs to lose or Southern Cal needs to lose. If that happens, it's going to be an argument in the playoff committee room between Clemson and Tennessee for the four spot. <laughs> let's say TCU loses. Well, let's say Southern Cal, it doesn't matter. We'll say Southern Cal loses. TCU runs the table. Georgia beats LSU. Ohio State beats Michigan. That final playoff ranking, you're going to have Georgia 1, Ohio State 2, TCU 3. The only remaining teams left that will have any argument for four and for, for that four spot is Tennessee and Clemson. Tennessee and Clemson. It'll be a 12-1 and Clemson with a division title and a conference title. Or Tennessee at 11-1 and with no division title and no conference title. I would hate to be Tennessee in that scenario because I have a feeling they would put Clemson in over Tennessee. Now, if TCU and Southern Cal lose, then it's possible Clemson and Tennessee get in. This would just be wild, like wildest case scenario here. Georgia would eliminate LSU. Ohio State would eliminate Michigan. Uh, TCU would lose, eliminating themselves. Southern Cal would lose, eliminating themselves. Okay, you got Georgia and Ohio State. Who else do you put in? Well, if Clemson's sitting there at 12 and 1 with an ACC title, they'd get the three spot or the four spot. The other spot would go to Tennessee. So as much talk as we're seeing about how Tennessee should definitely be in, it's not a guarantee they will. And for as much as tennis or Clemson has been forgotten about and just kind of assumed they're not going to make it, they've got probably the fifth or sixth best chance right now of any team in the country with a couple of weeks to go um, of getting in. Main thing is, of course, Tem uh, Tennessee and Clemson both have to win out and Georgia has to beat LSU. Those two things have just got to happen for either Tennessee or, or Clemson to have a chance because um, if they don't win out, they eliminate themselves. And if LSU beats Georgia, two SEC teams are getting in, and it won't be Tennessee. That then also makes it harder for Clemson to get in over a potential Ohio State, TCU, Southern Cal, whoever it might happen to be that's sitting there. TCU and Southern Cal losing obviously helps Tennessee and and, and uh and uh, Clemson, right? If they both lose, that's like best case scenario for those two teams. If TCU and Southern Cal lose a game, it's almost a guarantee Tennessee is getting in. And then it becomes a almost a, a, a more than 50, 60% uh, possibility that even the Taters would get in. Let, let me know down below. I think that's what might actually happen. It's going to be really hard for Southern Cal to win their last three games. Their defense has not been great this year. And as good as that offense is, it's hard to rely on that offense to bail you out week in and week out. They've also got issues at running back with Travis Dye having an injury. Um, you know, Caleb Williams is good. Jordan Atkinson, all those wide receivers. We know about the offense. Their defense has is, is been shaky at best. And that is not an easy three-game stretch to close out the season when you're talking about UCLA, a rivalry game. Notre Dame, a rivalry game. And then a Pac-12 title game against either Utah, who they already lost to, or uh, Oregon. It, you know, 
it's going to be really tough for Southern Cal to run the table. So it's very likely they lose a game. TCU it, it seems to have been hanging from the same thread for six weeks now. Big uh, deficits in the second half. They come back and win. Kansas State is absolutely smoking them. Their, first, their starting quarterback, Adrian Martinez, and their backup quarterback go down in the second half. They end up having to play a third-string quarterback. Kansas State does. They can't even get a first down. TCU ends up coming back to win. They played this past weekend on the road at Texas, where Texas was actually a seven-point favorite. TCU, who really hasn't played defense all year, comes out and just basically shuts Texas down and wins 17-10, to 10, I think it was. Uh, they play, uh, who do they play this week? They play Baylor this week. A decent team, but been underwhelming this year, under underachieved, I think. And then they end the regular season against Iowa State. Then they're going to have to play a Big 12 title game, possibly against Kansas State again. Well, how healthy is Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn and that whole thing? It's a very real possibility, maybe even over a 50% possibility, that both TCU and Southern Cal will lose a game before it's all said and done. Whether it's a regular season game here over the next couple of weeks or whether it's the, the conference title games that they both have to play in. I think it's a very real possibility that they both lose. And TCU with one loss, no matter who it's to or when it happens, is not getting in. And Southern Cal with two losses, no matter who the second loss is to or when it happens, is not getting in. Um, either Ohio State or Michigan is definitely getting in. And uh, Georgia is definitely getting in. So that's two spots taken right there without any argument or debate. Everyone knows Georgia's getting in. Everyone knows the winner of the Big Ten is getting in. If Ohio State wins, that probably knocks Michigan out. And this, you know, it, it, in other words, it, it might sound crazy to just say Tennessee and Clemson can are both going to make the playoffs. I don't think it's that crazy. If I had to predict right now, the actual playoffs uh, that will be uh, revealed the Sunday after conference championship game, I'd say Georgia one, Ohio State two, Tennessee three, and Clemson four. That would give you Georgia versus Clemson in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, or Ohio State versus Tennessee at the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona would be your first round playoff games. I don't trust Southern Cal to run the table. I don't trust TCU to run the table. I don't. Um, and Michigan could beat Ohio State, and that's like the fly in the ointment deal. What are they going to do with an 11-1 Ohio State versus an 11-1 Tennessee versus a 12-1 Clemson? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. But if Ohio State beats Michigan, you could definitely see both, uh, both Tennessee and Clemson uh, in the playoffs. Let me know what you think about these uh, scenarios down below, and I'll see you at 8 o'clock tonight for the live show. Have a great day.